APC leaders appear to have opted for consensus ahead of the Saturday National Convention Week. Hearing a unity list may soon emerge. Governor of Benue State and the minority leader of the House today emerged as leaders of the PDP 37 member Zoni Committee to deliver of who becomes the party's flag bearer ahead of 2023 and where such a person comes from is ahead, uh, in front of the PDP. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimaloye in Abuja. Let's begin this evening by telling you that 24 hours after attending the declaration of Atiku Abubakar, the former Anambra State Governor, Mr. Peter Obi, has declared his interest to run for president in 2023. Mr. Obi declared in Anambra State in the presence of uh, some Anambra traditional leaders and some stakeholders and where he was uh, speaking to them on his ambition and the reasons why he wants to lead Nigeria. Governor Peter Obi was ironimate to Atiku Abubakar on the platform of the PDP in 2019. Well, we can also tell you that the governor of Benue State, Mr. Samuel Otam, and the minority leader of the House of Representatives, Honorable Undudi Elumelu, have both emerged as a chairman and a deputy chair of the PDP Zoning Committee. The 37-member Zoning Committee was set up last week by the party to determine where it will zone its presidential candidate slot for 2023. And today, the party has inaugurated that committee that will determine where the pendulum will swing as far as the candidate of the PDP is concerned ahead of the 2023 general election. I believe by the time we have the big prize in our hands, we will share it, we will rotate it the way we want. If we had not been interrupted on this journey about six years ago, we had started the same process. At the beginning, we pushed the presidency to the south. I was one of those who took that decision. And there are many others here in this hall. He didn't stop any problem. After General Basanjo, we voluntarily sent it to Katsina. Fate played a fast one on us. But in the same spirit, we see after Momoru Yaradua sent it to, uh, to Bayesa. So PDP has a history of rotating our offices. Anybody who doesn't get this time should wait after the turn of whoever will be our next president. And I believe PDP is going to produce the next president. <laughs> Once we start the journey this time, we will ensure it goes round. That is the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Yocha Ayu, talking about the zoning arrangement and uh, inauguration of the PDP 37 member committee of the zoning panel. Well, it's going to be led by Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State and to be uh, deputized by the minority leader in the House of Representatives, Honorable Undudi Elumelum. Now, as far as the PDP is concerned, there are other uh, big weeks who are meeting today. They met earlier uh, last week in Bauchi, where the governor of Bauchi State uh, played host, uh, talking about the former Senate president, Bukola Saraki, and the governor of Sokoto State, Amino Tambua, and the governor of uh, Bauchi State, Governor Mohamed 
the three of them have again met to discuss the ramifications of uh, emerging a consensus candidate amidst some of them. Uh, they said earlier last week that they will be meeting with uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar, the former vice president, on whether or not they can agree on a candidate as a common front ahead of the 2023 election. And the more we meet, the more we, we continue to share our views about the importance of the unity of our party, because we believe it's only PDP that has really the solutions to help us get out of the problem we are in this country today. And it's important as stakeholders, as key leaders of this party, that we're seen to be united. Some of the decisions we've taken today also is that we're going to embark in reaching out to other aspirants. We had already, of course, identified uh, uh, senior uh, uh, leader of the party, the Wazir, and also other aspirants across the country, and also stakeholders, some of their former colleagues and governors are also are going to reach out to all part of this process of bringing us together and uniting the party. It's now time for us to check out some of your political roundup stories. Dakota State's Commissioner for Environment and son of former governor of the state, Sagar Bafarawa, has indicated interest to join the race to become the next governor of the state under the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Bafarawa, during a visit to the state's party secretariat alongside the supporters, promised to partner the private sector to develop the state if elected. He also promised to build on the achievements of Governor Aminu Tambuar. According to him, the essence of his visit to the Secretariat was to consult party leaders on his ambition. In Abia State, women in their numbers today came out to rally support for the candidacy of Yahya Bello as the president of Nigeria come 2023. The women said they came together from over 700 different groups across the southeast of the country, cutting across sectors, civil society organizations, religious, professional bodies, political parties and market women. They noted that their support for Yahya Bello was because he had demonstrated capacity in key sectors of governance and claimed that he was the only governor in Nigeria that had given women the right voice in governance. I think um, I'm here specifically for Alhaji Yahya Bello because he's the only governor, in fact he's the only man that has proven that women should not be pushed aside. He has carried women along. Former President of the Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has met with the National Assembly Caucus of the People's Democratic Party to canvass support for his presidential ambition ahead of the 2023 general elections. He acknowledged the role the National Assembly plays in promoting good governance in Nigeria, hence his decision to Thank meet and much, share his aspiration with them. The lawmakers challenged him to play a unifying role in the party. I can be that bridge between the northern part of this country and the southern part of this country. I believe also I can reach across the religious divide of Muslims and Christians. I also believe I can reach about the divide of the older and the younger. I reach across the most important divide between the private sector and the public sector based on my background. A coalition with the name tag, the Green Alliance, has called on the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, to join the race to become Nigeria's next president in 2023. The group, during a press briefing in Asaba, the Delta State Capital, said it is supporting Mr. Emefele because Nigeria needs his leadership and financial expertise to address current economic challenges. Chairman of the All Progressives Congress in Anambra State, Basuri GDK, has asked the new members of the executives of the party to begin deploying needed strategies to get victory in all elections ahead of it, particularly in 2023. Mr. GDK gave the charge during the inauguration of the state, zonal, and local government executives. He also gave the number of delegates representing the state at the National Convention of the party this weekend as 180.
in a matter of days. The All Progressive Congress APC and uh, its members and leaders will converge on the Eagle Square here in the city of Abuja to hold a national convention. The much talked about national convention. I mean, it's a lot of internal house cleaning and uh, a lot of issues that have been generated by the leadership issues. Now, the President Muhammad Buhari yesterday met with. Uh, some of the aspirants who are gunning for the number one seat as far as the party administration is concerned, that's the national chairman of the APC. Um, about seven of them, we understand, met with President Muhammad Buhari. For some of those uh, issues raised uh, as to whether or not the candidate can agree or the aspirants can agree on the issue of consensus at the end of the meeting with President Muhammad Buhari was not clear. What was totally agreed as relating to whether or not people should step down or anyone is a favorite candidate uh, amidst all of the chairmanship aspirants for the APC. That was the meeting yesterday with President Muhammad Buhari. And today, the president has met with leaders of the National Assembly Caucus in the Senate and the House of Representatives. But one thing came out clear in this very meeting is that, is that there will be a consensus on a lot of uh, the, the positions that have been vied for. And there might be a unity list. Take a listen first and foremost to what the president said at that meeting. We have a couple of days to national convention, and we must collectively ensure the success of the event. As you all know, the national convention of our party, which we have committed, is holding on the 26th, March 2022. And we cannot afford to do anything that will jeopardize the chances of the party in the 2023 general elections. The limited time frame of the INEC timetable does not permit us any room for delay or further squabbling. We must therefore, in the light of this reality, consistently keep our eyes on the ball and refuse any distraction. A critical segment of our national democratic process is the National Assembly. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Being representatives of our people from all over the country, the National Assembly, especially the Ninth Assembly has exhibited commitment to a peaceful, democratic process in its conduct and uttermost maturity in its relationship with other arms of government. I commend you, the leadership, for this success. That is a word of the president to the leaders of the National Assembly Caucus. So after the meeting, uh, they of course spoke to journalists about what transpired or what the president said or what they agreed on. And I mean to take a listen to the Senate President Hamid Lawan. Officers of the APC to hold today's meeting with us. Mr. President, emphasize the need for us in the APC to be united, always act as a family, ensure that we remain focused. We have the leadership of Nigeria today at the national level. And of course, we have many states, about 22 states under the leadership of the APC governors, actually 22.3. Five. We have half a state in Anambra where we have, no, it's gone already. <laughs> but we, ha we have 22 states and um, control the federal government. 
that requires that APC as a political party remains very focused, energetic, and purposeful as it has always been, and ensure that we maintain the trajectory of development for our country, because that is the trust Nigerians gave us in 2015 and renewed that in 2019. Senator President Hamed Lawan there. Uh, some of the key points that came out of that the import of that meeting was the fact that there's going to be a unity list that we emerge. That means consensus. But there are a lot of people who perhaps are not happy with the position or with the trend of things ahead of Saturday. It's Thursday, uh, but tomorrow is going to be eve of the convention. But what happens when people are disagreeing or people are not happy? We try to get all the side to all of this matter tonight. Let's hear from those who are perhaps not really happy and the reasons why they are not happy. Tonight, I'm being joined by a member of uh, the APC, Mr. Benga Titiloye, as well as a member of the APC Rebirth Group, uh, Aliyu Audu. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming tonight. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Let me ask you first, Mr. Titiloye, how does this arrangement of consensus, how does it come to you? Well, the... Um so I must say it doesn't make any sense. Really? Yeah, no, it doesn't. I mean, make any making. Sense. I mean, uh, coming from the leader of your party, who was agreed, who um, met so, with. Uh, so look, let's call it spade a spade, okay? This is a democracy. It is called a democracy. You know, and there are laws. You know, there's a constitution for the party. There's the electoral act that has just, you know, been put in there. And this singular act is against a lot of things. Like what? Okay, so I'll give you an example. In uh, the Electoral Act, Act. The portion that talks about consensus yes. and the modalities of the Clause the consensus. 84 9 yes. of the Electoral Act provides that a political party that adopts a consensus candidate shall secure a written consent from all cleared aspirants for this position. So are you saying that, that has not been done? So this is not a military rule. <laughs> this is the no, no, I'm asking, I mean, you were not in the of meeting course, of, course, of the aspirant and the president, were of you? Of course, a couple of us have principles that are contested for the chairmanship, you know? But that what are they telling you? What did they tell you? It's not about what they tell me. It's on the news. <laughs> you have That's just, what? No, you no, have no, just spoken no. about it. Yes, but you, you know, tell us what exactly the problem the is. The APC is coming up with a consensus candidate. You understand? What does the word consensus mean? It's, it's, in, it's in that law. It's provided <laughs> in that law. Consensus. That, consensus Look, that you have to agree. Exactly. But the law is now saying that you have to have a written agreement mm -hmm. as to stepping down or yes. not going ahead when happen? there is a consensus agreement. It did not happen. But do you, know, do you know whether or not it will happen between now and Saturday? Uh, look, so there are no children amongst us. You understand? And it's high time for Nigeria to move forward. You know, it's laughable. You know, these kind of things are pedestrian. Honestly, you know, you need to know what Nigeria is, where we are now, where we ought to be, okay? This is a progressive party. It's not a, a party you just go and um, sit down with friends and start drinking or eating. This is a political party. That is, that is the ruling party in Nigeria. So are you arguing with the president on the point that oh, definitely. there must be a consensus? Oh, yes. You don't think consensus is the way to go? My brother, if there will be a consensus, the law has stated what is supposed to be. Okay? And if we're going to go into, let's go and test popularity, for God's sake. This is a democracy, not a military rule. You know, so we can't be coming up with absolutely pedestrian. You don't agree with the way the party has gone about it? I, 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 I doubt whether anybody in their right senses would. Ali, let me, let me ask you. You, are the, you wanted the rebirth of the APC. Uh, what's your view? What's your take on the development in the last 24 hours? Um, I, I, I'll put it simple and straight. I think um, the president would have done, um, might have just done the biggest damage to the, I mean, the person of the president, you know, 
that um, the leader we have all come to know, be loyal to, and follow. If what has happened in the last 24 hours is anything to go by then, it simply means that um, the president is simply saying loyalty means nothing. Being good means nothing. Being honest means nothing. Being truthful means nothing in partisan politics. And that is heartbreaking. It what is were you, what heartbreaking. Were you, it, it, it's obvious that, you, uh, obvious that you have a preconceived notion of how you think that things could, should go, and they're not going exactly the way you wanted it to go. What exactly was your opinion or your mindset before now? Time and time again, Mr. President has retreated how he wants power to return to the people. He said this. He's passed it. He said it many times. He's, he's passed it in laws, you know, that actually show that he's committed to, sending, to taking power back to the people, which is the very essence of democracy. But in a situation where the president allows himself to be cornered by a certain people to decide on a candidate, that is one part. Then the candidate itself is another. I do not think that Abdullah Hadamu, who was a front runner of the third term agenda, in any way deserved to head any political party, let alone a progressive World one. What third term agenda? Of Obasanjo? Of Obasanjo. He was at the very forefront of it. Yes. If Obasanjo had succeeded with the third term, then there would have been a fourth, there would have been a fifth. Obasanjo is still alive. It is very possible we probably will have a living yes, president right person. now. And that means there would have been no APC and there would have been no pre President Muhammad Buhari's presidency. And there were people who have been loyal to presidents since 2003 till date. And he looks at those people. Malab Sali Mustafa, Senator Tanko Al Makura, Sani 313, who has, who has shown service and sacrifice to the nation over the last few, few years. You look at them, and this, all of their sacrifices mean nothing. And I cannot even pick a thing that connects Adamu Abdullahi and the president, except the fact that they are in the same party right now. Adamu Abdullahi, in 2007, told the kings in Nasarawa not to let not to not to receive President Muhammad Buhari, so, the dead so they blocked him. A -A -A -P -P candidate, and that he, he threatened he was going to depose them. And the Mobile in 2007 allegedly asked for permission for then President Muhammad Buhari to, 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 to eliminate President Muhammad Buhari. And the Mobile in, and his party so in two... Strong allegations that uh, are made. See, they are, they are there, they are there, they are not, that's why I said alleged. Mm. If you know what I said, I said alleged to have asked for that. But in, you need to show evidence. In, 20, you need to show in 2011, I'll of, show you evidence. In 2011, their party in Nasara locked the stadium. It was Ta'al, it was Ta'al, uh, uh, what was it called? Um, conference center that, that was used for CPC campaign. And there were people who have been loyal, who have stayed true, who have been there with you all the long. And you look at them vying for a position. And the Mabla is not even a foundation member of the APC. This he does is, not even know our idea. He doesn't is, know the vision is, of the this party. This is a race, uh, Mr. Audu. And in, a, in any race, one person will emerge. And when the party, I have no problem with that. When the party has deferred to the president to say, look, as a leader of the party, we're looking forward to how you will decide who you want, who you prefer. And the man has said, well, we do not officially know whether or not he has agreed um, on Adam Abdullahi. So how have you come to the point of saying the president has preferred Adam Abdullahi? So the news is everywhere. I have people, I have personal people I have contact with. I have, I have had discussion. And it is not just how, what he said. It's how he communicated it. How See, did he communicate it? We look up to Mr. President. How did he communicate it? How we look up to Mr. President. No, no, can you clarify? How, I, would have how expected, I would have expected that Mr. President sits with all of the stakeholders, which is, I mean, is the moral side. Forget the law. It's the moral thing to do. All the aspirants were there. Yes. Did they have a conversation? No. <laughs> It was a talking to. Not there, a there was no conversation between them and the president. That is, that is, it's not just to the aspirant. It's to every single one of us that have been loyal to, to, the, to, to Mr. President till date. Every single one of us that have held through to the dream and the vision that this party, APC, is truly a progressive party that is targeted at making Nigeria greater. Excuse me, how am I supposed to campaign against 16 years of ruin of PDP if my national chairman had been in PDP, was, was a foundation member of the PDP, and was in PDP for 16 years. The same 16 years I criticized PDP for, I will now bring the man who has been there, a foundation member, to come and head my party. That's what your president wants. I mean, your leader. That isn't what I want, and that's why I'm saying that I am hoping that every aspirant for national chairmanship will resist the temptation of yes. being coerced into either going for their law or, 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 or 
being seen as being disrespectful to Mr. President, I am saying. Are you that a delegate to the convention? No, I am not. So you don't have a choice. You don't have a say. I do. I have influence, and I'm going to use it. Mr. Titoloye, yes. what of you? Are you disappointed in it? what I I'm totally disappointed. I don't know what you said that. Is he a delegate, you know? No, no it's I'm, a big question. Because I'm not a delegate. If you're, if I'm you're not a, a delegate, delegate, you might be able to say, I'm going to oppose it at, at, at my the, brother, on the ground. My brother. If you have an opposing You see, team. I'm not a delegate. You understand? I'm an international actor. You understand my point? I have followership. People listen. You understand what I'm saying? I, had, I am the convener of true Nigerian. You understand what I'm saying? And I've spoken to the youth. Participate. Register. Join political parties. I've said everything. Call them all kinds of names. So what's happening? So what are you going to I'm do I'm telling you that what the president did was terrible as a political party. APC. I totally disagree with it. I reject it with every form of sensibilities in me. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Yes. I'm going to speak. That's all I can do for now. Speak. Well, I mean, in politics, uh, you might have your say, or you might not have your way. Yeah. So what happens when you don't have your so, way? So, look, if we sit down and have a decent competition and you win, I will shake your hand and congratulate you. That's true. You understand what I'm saying? But we're running to this door, and then you blow my eye, clear my leg. And then you are saying, what will I do? Of course, I'm going to speak, since you are stronger than me. So, so what is the way forward now? The way forward, you understand, is for what has happened to be reversed. And let us test popularity. I do not even think it has to be reversed, to be honest with you. But what doesn't have to happen is an imposition. What doesn't have to happen is, is looking at people who have been loyal to you over the decades, over the years, to tell them to end their aspiration just because you want them. But there's no specific reason as to why you want them to go this way. With APC rebel, I'm still not clear, gentlemen. I'm yeah. still not clear because there were no words directly from the president. We, can, that, we only saw pictures of them having a meeting. But you are not satisfied. You said the manner in which the president, he, he spoke to them, that he, he didn't allow a conversation between them. How can, I mean, what exactly, you said you are principal there. What can you confirm to us that it really happened, that, that didn't go down well with you? Um, you see, so um, what I've come to do here this night is to tell you, and by extension, most of our, our party members, you know, that um, this is wrong. It is absolutely wrong. This is not a democracy. The decision or the way the pre president told them? The manner. Both. At which it was done. How did he tell the them? You have still not told me that. How did he tell them? <laughs> did he just say, step down, step down, step down, this is my candidate? Or how did he say? Because time is not on our side, gentlemen. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Shehu, consensus requires that the stakeholders come to the table and have a negotiation and come to an agreement a point of agreement, right, where they all agree. And, and they are even protected by the law. The Electoral Act right now means you have to have your written consent. Yes. You know, to agree to a consensus. You think they didn't sign there? I am sure they did sign. The, the, the obviously. I don't right. think. I am sure they did not sign. So what I'm telling you now is the president can throw his weight behind a candidate of his preferred choice. But that does not mean he should ask others not to go ahead with their life aspiration. That is inhuman. Yeah, but you know, but you know for a fact that um, um, they, they were told to return everybody's 20 million. You know, that is that is, not fair? That is not the issue. That's not fair. That's not even one-fifth of, this, of the, the three aspirants I know of each of them. It's not even one, it's not even two percent of what they have expended so far for the past nearly two years. Not two percent. So you are not only aggrieved about me, the, in the personality of Adam Abdullahi. You you may not like his person. No, but no, does no, it, no, no, Can no, you no. take it just a moment? Person. I don't, I don't, um, just I don't a moment. have anything against his person. Can but you I have take everything away against his ability to lead your party? No. You see. you see, my party is a progressive party, and I think I joined a progressive party because I I think we are going to run on the ground of um, equity, fairness, justice. You know, discipline. And most importantly, we said when we, when we started this party that it's a new party for a new Nigeria, a party for a greater Nigeria. I do, Abdullah Hadamu, with the antecedent of his democratic um, his participation, does not reflect those values. 
That is exactly my point. After, after, you see, um, Senator Abdul I mean, nobody, what we're talking here isn't personal. If it was personal, you'd be hearing stupid idiots and all that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, Abdullah Adamu was my father's student. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not personal. It is the way these things have done, not even in a progressive party, for God's sake. Gentlemen, uh, I guess uh, this agitation, I mean, you see, have about 24 hours to vent and uh, make sure that uh, things go well with your party. My God's grace. I think it's, it's okay for you to agitate and uh, show your grievance. It's part of the process, isn't it? But I must sincerely thank you, Mr. Benga. It's good to see you again. Um, um, Ali Abdu, Audu, thank you so much for, thank you for, for coming. The difference between both of you is that you have good beards, good looking beards, but one is gray, one is black. <laughs> but thank you so much. It's good. Thank I'm you. happy that you can smile because you were very much agitated. But we take a break, and when we come back, we'll be getting some explanation as to how the party decided on these co uh, consensus arrangements. One of the leaders of the party, the governor of Plateau State, Mr. Simon Lalong, will be joining us for us, another leader in the National Assembly. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. <laughs> for with us right here on the program. Let's continue with the conversation on the APC National Convention, which is slated for this Saturday, the 26th of March 2022. I'm now being joined one of, by one of the leaders of the APC, the governor of uh, Plateau State, Governor Simon Lalong, who joins us virtually. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us. Um, earlier, you saw on the program uh, the, the grievance of some members of your party. They are grieved. Give us an understanding about the, the situation in respect of uh, the consensus, uh, consensus arrangement. We are understanding now that there's going to be a unity list. What is that about? Thank you, Sean, and uh, good evening, viewers. Now, I also watch some of the grievances from uh, very keen supporters of our political party. Now, I think analyzing it very well, the Constitution, even the new elected, the, the new Electoral Act provides for three dimensions. One, the direct, the indirect, and of course, the consensus. Consensus has a lot of processes. Now, in our own case, let me say, for those who even say that uh, it has not been available in APC or it has not been available in other political parties, I came from PDP to S to CPC, then eventually to the to the major to APC. In PDP, it is almost the same. The last con uh, the last convention that was conducted by the, the the PDP was consensus. In APC, in 19 in uh, when we were electing after uh, Akande uh, Baba Akande, when we came to elect uh, Oyegun. It was done by consensus, mostly by consensus. The second one that was also done with Oshomole, I was a governor. It was done by consensus. And that's why the president was emphasizing that let us continue with consensus. As much as possible, we must continue with consensus. The fact that the party had approached, had adopted consensus does not mean that it, uh, stops, uh, it will stop anybody from contesting election. That's usually the principle. At the end of the day, people wonder. They say, no, it's governors that go to sit down. It's the president that will decide. You know that anybody that is contesting election will first of all go to say, let me go and inform my leader. Let me go and inform the governor. Let me go and inform Mr. President. The president must know of my ambition. Yes, he's the leader of the party. At the end of the day, where a party has such leadership, Loyalty uh, is it's, tested it's a bit by more tricky for your party now, especially because there is a provision of the law as we speak on how consensus has to be uh, arrived at. And I'll quickly read the two clauses or uh, the three clauses under the consensus candidature uh, for uh, for any election. It says a political party that adopts a consensus candidate shall secure the written consent of all cleared aspirants 
for the position, indicating their voluntary withdrawal from the raise and the endorsement of the consensus candidate. A written uh, consent. And the subsection 10 of that, uh, of that uh, section says, where a political party is unable to secure the written consent of all cleared aspirants for the purpose of a consensus candidate, it shall revert to the choice of direct or indirect primaries for the nomination of candidates for the aforesaid elective positions. The 11 says, a special convention or nomination congress shall be held to ratify the choice of consensus candidates at designated centers at the national state, senatorial, federal, and state constituency, as the case may be. The grievances of the gentleman who left the studio a few minutes ago was the fact that there were no written consent based on what the law says. As far as they are concerned, it's more or less in position to them. Well, let me tell you, so has the election has the election been conducted? The election is not yet being conducted. We are already in the process of the election. We are already in the process of election. An election will end only at the convention after Saturday, after election. Now, what I'm saying is that when processes are done like this, even uh, consensus are done through consultation. So through consultations, at the end of the day, through consultations, you will see that some candidates, some states will even bring one candidate. They will produce a candidate. That is now the consensus from that state. Now, for instance, if a state produces one candidate, will you require another, will you require a written consent to show that uh, there was consensus? That is the basis of the consensus I'm talking about. We have not reached that stage. We are still talking about consultations at this stage. Now, people will say that Mr. President is imposing. For a party that has leadership, loyalty is usually, loyalty ends with the leader of the party. For parties that don't have leadership, like some parties, I don't want to mention them, to say that I'm accusing them, there are no specified or defined leadership. So there is no leader. For APC, we have the leader. The Constitution provides that the leader of this party is Mr. President. And so for every consultation... Well, let me ask quickly, quickly, uh, Yeah, quickly, sir. Um, who is then the preferred um, chairmanship aspirant of your party? That's what I'm saying. Now it is still the period, the, the processes of consultation. Mr. President, uh, many people who contested the election, one way or the other, had approached the president, had approached their governors in their various states. At a point, the governors also approached Mr. President to say, do you have an input? Do you um, have an input as to who are the candidates? In some cases, it is, it is not saying that it is by force that when the president says it is Mr. A, you must vote for Mr. A. We are seeking for Mr. President's uh, uh, input, which is done in most cases. Mr. President will say, for me, for the chairmanship, I would prefer Mr. A. Now it's left for the supporters, it's left for the, again, another governors or all the stakeholders. Who, was, uh, yes, who, who, who then is the president's uh, preferred candidate? Well, it is very well known now. The president had addressed us governors. We went to him to ask him, who is really your preferred candidate? First of all, he said, I prefer that the chairmanship should come from the North Central Zone. Then we went back again after deliberations, and we came back to ask, do you have a preferred candidate in the North Central Zone? And he said, yes. For me, I would have preferred uh, Abdullah. Uh, uh, I, I would prefer uh, if Abdullah had them has made the choice. Now, if we get Abdullah Adamu Did, he, he, did the, choice, the president explain the reason why he wanted Abdullah Adamu as the chairman of the APC? All of, look, all of them, the president has everything for all of them. And the president took them one by one, took one by one to explain his relationship with all of them and how they are all uh, capable of becoming chairman. Capacity, they all have capacity. But the constitution provides that there must be one person, only one person. Only one person will be chairman of the party. So if you insist that who would I prefer, I will also say it's done. Even governors do that. Governors do that. I will say, well, I will prefer this. But however, they are all going into the elections. If you think otherwise, you all can right. vote anybody.
So let me ask, uh, there's been a lot of division within the ranks and file of, uh, the, rank and file of the governors of the APC. Um, yes. Has there been a settlement in your rank now? No, we don't have any division in our ranks and files. I've told you that when we went all over to the place, there are, I mean, when we saw what a governor colleague of yours wrote on one of your platforms about his grievance uh, on the set of affairs of the party. It's obvious, when did he write the public, that? that you have not agreed when, as when did he write? of the APC. When did you he write that, so, Because our last... When did he write that? Our last meeting was yesterday. We had our last meeting yesterday. We talked about uh, a week and ago after, or so. No, that one is overtaken by events. That was at the beginning of those problems because it was processes of consultation. Yes, some governors will say, no, I prefer this, I prefer this method, I prefer... That was even the beginning of zoning. Because when you were talking about zoning, there were bound to be quarrels here and there. It's a conflict of interest. People had different interests. So at the end of the day, the governors agreed to a zoning, a zoning formula. And that reduced the friction within the governors. Now, when we agreed to a, a zoning formula, we now started making further consultation on who were the possible candidates that will come out, that will come out from that zoning, that, that zoning process. So at that stage, yes, there were different interests. That is exactly what one of the governors explained. He said at the particular time, all of us were divided on different interests. But after we agreed on the zoning formula, the governors were, unanim were unanimous, were united and also unanimous on the approaches that were taken. And after the consultation with Mr. President, yesterday we had our last meeting with, with Mr. President. And after that meeting, we came out and made a public statement. We, became, we said we had a meeting with Mr. President. We made our presentation to Mr. President. And Mr. President agreed with the presentation and also to the unity of purpose of the governors for a progressive governors forum. So at that stage, no right. governor, governor was complaining. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, on the no final note, complain about I understand that. that there will be a unity list. When is that list going to come out? Well, the unity list will come out on the day of the election. It may come out, it may not come out. Okay. That's what I will tell you. But <laughs> it's what All people right. agree. Yes, you are, you are talking of unity list because at this stage, I am the unity list everybody will tell you is that it's a confirmation of the fact that all the states have agreed and all everything that we put in process after due consultations, we all agree that these are our representatives. But that notwithstanding, it does not stop anybody from going ahead right. to contest the election. But in most cases, when people talk about unity list, it is obvious that if you are contesting, it means that there's a limit to how far you can go. Because it is already uh, extended to other various states. And at that stage, every state yeah. is protecting also her own, her own nomination. Okay. So if you dare, if you yeah. take a risk with so your much. own nomination. Yeah. Your Excellency, uh, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State, thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Simon. Grateful. Yeah. Everyone, you've gotten some insight on uh, some of the intricacies as to the consensus issues. Let's get some information on the preparation, the logistics, and whether or not the APC is ready for the national convention. I'm being joined by one of the uh, members of the media subcommittee and uh, the chair of the judiciary committee in the National Assembly in the Senate, Senator Okoyami Bamdele joins us now. Thank you so much, Senator, for coming tonight. It's my pleasure to be here. Good evening, viewers. How turbulent is it for your party right now? Things are not perfect, right? But how are you guys adjusting to it? I mean, when I say guys, I mean how the leaders of the party are adjusting to it. There's been a lot of division. What I would uh, put it this way, uh, there's actually nothing happening in APC now that is not um, a Nigerian situation. Uh, in other words, to say... How turbulent is it for APC right now would even mean, by extension, uh, wondering how turbulent it is uh, for Nigeria. Uh, some of the things we are seeing in APC are also a reflection of uh, uh, the state of our nation. And there's no doubt in the fact that uh, APC is a party of people from different backgrounds, 
different walks of life, and uh, it would be mere assumption, you know, for anyone to think that uh, uh, you have a perfect uh, situation of understanding where uh, once something is placed on the table, everyone agrees uh, in total, no one uh, differs. Uh, so we are, we are having to manage that uh, as much as possible. Uh, but what's important is that democracy uh, is about the majority, you know, having their way and the minority having their say. Uh, both must be safeguarded, must be protected. Uh, and th that's really what is happening. Are you afraid that, I mean, as a lawyer, a senior yeah. one at that, mm. it, uh, the, the tenement of the, the drafting of the Electoral Act, we talked about the consensus candidate, your party might be running far of it, and it might be an Achilles heel for your party in the nearest future. Um, I do not think so, but if you have specific uh, I, I, provisions so, in mind... Yes, the section that I read in terms of how those who was withdraw from the race have to, exactly, yes. have to sign and all of that, well, it's, it's very tricky because if you miss it out, mm. legally speaking, mm. it can crumble the whole process. I agree with you, uh, but to the extent that, uh, by the grace of God, I was even one of uh, the drafters of the uh, several amendments to the Electoral Act, uh, which eventually had been signed into law uh, by Mr. President. Uh, I participated actively both as a member of the Senate Committee on INEC, as well as uh, the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights, and, and Legal Matters. And uh, we also are doing our best to advise the party in ensuring that every step is taken to ensure that we don't run foul of the law. And there is nothing the party has done so far uh, that is uh, against the letters or spirit of the Electoral Act. Well, the meeting with the, the president, the ad with the, uh, the, chair, the chairmanship candidate, yes. it doesn't look like when he told them to mm. go and step down for Adamu Abdullahi, it doesn't look like the signing or the agreement was met. No, that's, that's uh, premature. That has, it has not come to that. Uh, a course of action does not arise until it's time for a deed to be done or a deed has been done. This election we are talking about is still at least some 48 hours away, you know, from here. It's so your Saturday. party will still do Saturday. that? Every, still meet day, up every with that? Every step that needs to be taken by the party will be taken. And mind you, everything that is going on now is still at the level of consultation. The president met with uh, a chairmanship aspirant. That's part of the consultation. The president met with the governors. That's part of the consultation. Aspirant themselves are, are meeting among themselves. They held meetings before the president invited them to a meeting. They met thereafter. You know, these are all part of uh, consultation. What is important is that our party constitution, which is now kind of uh, amplified by the new electoral law itself, you know, provides for three modes of selection of those who would be candidates of the party, either at the, at the Congress or convention or people that would be the flag bearers of the party in general election. Um, and one of such uh, um, three uh, ways of, of selecting them is by process of consensus if not direct or indirect primaries. Which, but, which is but probably the easiest or the safest or probably cheapest. It's, it's probably the, the easiest, cheapest. but it may become the most controversial too, if and, it is not and, well and handled. most legally... Uh, yes, uh, uh, the, the, the most... Um, uh, legally uh, sensitive too. It may become very prone to, <laughs> to, to, legal, to legal action, depending on how it is handled. Yeah. But like I said, the idea of a written consent, you know, is something that will become mature by the time it is time for the convention, uh, the election. So, so in other words, at the convention ground, yeah. the election planning committee will have to state the various positions to be contested, the various aspirants, and the, the elections, I mean, the offices into which you have only one candidate, yeah. you know, which will still require affirmation by the entire And Congress. also now, because and of now this the law, they have concept. to show evidence of the written concept. Oh, yes. Yeah. All, all of that will so, be but, done. But in all of this, let me ask you, as a member of the subcommittee on the media, is yes. everything ready and set? I would say so far so Have you been on the ground? Yes, we have been on the ground. What I, is it I, looking I like? I came here from Eagle Square, okay. and um, uh, there had been a series of meetings. Um, virtually every subcommittee of the, of the uh, National Convention of the Party 
uh, is working around the clock. Uh, we have um, just, um, I mean, one more day, so to say, before the convention to, to perfect all the plans. Uh, but so far, things look good, and um, there's a lot of excitement uh, in the air. Uh, and, and I don't envisage that there will be any logistics uh, problems. Uh, yes, there were issues that needed to be resolved. Uh, they have been resolved, and, and substantially, a lot of them, you know, have been resolved. And as we speak, there are consultations going on across the country in all the six geopolitical zones. Uh, what uh, people have been talking about all day today was about the consultation the president had with governors and uh, chairmanship as well yesterday with, only, with respect to only one of the six. positions to be contested, which yeah. is the national chairman. All, right. all the other ones that have been uh, zoned to various geopolitical zones, mm -hmm. governors and leaders are meeting as we speak to also macro zone those positions to various All states right. within the geopolitical Senator, zone. on a final note, yes, we've seen a lot of cleavages in your party. It's a sign of a bleak future if it's not properly managed. Now, the big question is that President Muhammad Buhari will leave the stage. And the fear is that should he leave, it portends a lot of trouble for your party. Do you see that kind of trouble too? Well, the fact that we see knows that kind of a fear uh, itself shows or demonstrates the level of nascency of our democracy. You know, because if you have a democracy that is mature, that is stable, you shouldn't be too concerned about the, the danger, the exit of an individual will portend to the future of a political but party. That the but that's not as, the as fact as that your party you to have together. a president who at every point had commanded over 10 million votes. That should not be a fear. That should only be a call, a clarion call, on every serious-minded member of APC, yeah. you know, to ensure that we get our acts together as a party and we reposition the party and align with the popular yearnings and aspirations of the Nigerian people, you know, and as much as possible ensure that we're able to uh, offer ourselves right. as an alternative to everything Nigerians say they don't want. Senator Apayami Mbamindele, member of uh, the APC National Convention Media Subcommittee, thank you so much for coming tonight. It's my pleasure. I appreciate sure. it. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye for now.